who yeah. loves football, of how the loss of so many fans can affect so many people. Jock Brown takes up the story. The St Mern manager Tony Fitzpatrick has freshened up his team following a midweek defeat in Easter Road. Assistant manager Frank McGarvey is out, so too is Peter Weir and Ian Cameron and Robert Dawson. But there are places for Mark McWalter and Paul Kinnaird and for the former Rangers midfield player Billy Davis in midfield. Brian Hamilton too is back after a long layup. And with Campbell Money still suffering from his back injury, 20-year-old Les Fridge continues in goal. He's a former youth international who was with Chelsea and he's the enabled deputy for Money this season. Rangers 2 make one significant alteration. Stuart Munro drops out and John Brown takes his place at left back. And that has allowed the former St Mirren player Ian Ferguson to return after completing a three match suspension. So he'll operate beside Derek Ferguson and Ray Wilkins in midfield. So the change around complete. Rangers start the match before a capacity crowd inside Love Street. 24,600 capacity, and every ticket has been sold for this afternoon's match, reflecting the massive interest in the run into the league championship, and of course, in St. Martin's prospects of hanging on, looking for that fifth place in the Premier League to give them a place in Europe next season. So, St. Martin's suffering a major setback at Easter Road in midweek when they lost 1 0 to Hibbs. They really have to take something on this match if they're to keep pressure on for that purpose. But Rangers interested now only in continuing on their winning ways towards the championship. And the competition for places in the Rangers ranks becoming intense. Cool squad to choose from, with the notable exception, of course, of the unlucky Ian Durant. But here's St. Martin going forward. Paul Chalmers charging into the back of Gary Stevens. And referee Bill Crombie from Edinburgh gives the first free kick of the match. Drinkle going up early against Neil Cooper, doing a little bit of elbowing in the air, and the free kick goes to St. Martin. Neil Cooper playing that to the left, looking for Tom Wilson, I think, but he had no chance of reaching that, and it's Gary Stevens with the Rangers throw. Here's Trinkle. Challenging player is Dave Winnie for St. Martin on a fine tackle, right at the byline, conceding the corner kick. Dave Winnie wearing number five, playing alongside Neil Cooper in the heart of the St. Martin defence. That's towards Goff. There's John Brown. Well, not at all far away, that header from Brown. The physical presence in the box from Rangers quite considerable. There was Richard Goff winning it. Brown on the six-yard line, the header goes wide. Butcher wins it from McWalter. Davis to Martin. Butcher again. Good control from Wilkins. Pass breaks off Cooper to McCoy. The chance for Rangers now with Drinkle. Gary Stevens racing forward on the right. A superb run that from Gary Stevens. Drinkle waiting for Stevens, racing up on the right, splitting his in one defence, and the shot goes narrowly wide. Tom Wilson finding Hamilton. The layoff to Davis. Here's Martin. Good play from St. Martin. Here's Billy Davis again. Running at the St. Martin defence. There's Brian Hamilton. Magnificent football that from St. Martin. Beautifully created from midfield. Here was Billy Davis, the inspiration of it all. What a fine pass this was. Brian Hamilton's first time shot and Woods gathered it in the end. Here's Ian Ferguson. Very strong on the ball. Now Gary Stevens is on side. Here's Mark Walters. Martin trying to close him down. Inside it goes to Brown. And his right foot. Blocked by Davis. Martin can prevent the corner. He's given that straight to Wilkins. Walters was played on side by Martin. That's a good tackle from the fullback. 
Martin appeared to be impeded there by Wilkins. But referee Bill Crombie saw it differently. Get the free kick to Rangers, taken quickly, and there's Neil Cooper with the clearance. Nelson Wynn feeling thoroughly aggrieved about that. Brian Martin in particular, who did appear to be obstructed, but here's Martin Walter on the break on the right for St. Bun. What a match this is now. There's Mike Walter. And he's won a corner kick off Terry Butcher. Chris Woods organising his defence under pressure from Chalmers on the line. Rounding up with Cooper, it breaks to Davis. It's Kinnaird again. It's a good cross. Chalmers couldn't make it. And Ferguson comes in behind. And suddenly Rangers are under real pressure. Good ball in this from Kinnaird. You'll see Paul Chalmers couldn't quite get there. And Ferguson was taking no chances. Graham Sunnis in the director's box on the telephone to the dugout. That shot is working this time. Walker to the header, there's McCoy looking for Trinkle. When he collects for St. Martin and turns back in the end to Fridge. Taking on Butcher, making for the byline. Great play from the centre forward. That was well taken by Woods, but that'll do McWalter's confidence no end of good. Taking on Terry Butcher, going to the byline, getting in a good near post cross, which Woods took well. Run getting lots of width into the play. There's Chalmers. Not but one for Davis. He's beaten to the ball by Wilkins. Trinkle very strong in possession. Here's Derek Ferguson. That's for McCoy East. No Drinkle. Inspired, creative play from Rangers. The pass was magnificent from Derek Ferguson. The layoff from McCoy East. The finish from Drinkle. Just a couple of feet too high. Well, that really would have been a classic, that one. Set up by an absolutely outstanding pass from Derek Ferguson. Walter, Brian Hamilton, this is Brian Martin, up goes Butcher, now Wilkins to Brown, this is Walters and now Wilkins, good play again from Rangers, Derek Ferguson in possession, Ferguson making a run on the right, it's a great build up this from Rangers, Gary Stevens calls the ball inside, it's blocked by Winnie, Half-hearted appeals for handball, but what tremendous play that was once again. Beautifully constructed by Rangers, releasing Ian Ferguson on the right. The ball played into the path of Gary Stevens, and it was Winnie who was in the way. Butcher winning the high ball, Miss Walters. Good play from Winnie, but the pass goes astray. It's Gary Stevens with the head of this, Keith Walker winning it from Ferguson. Forcing the recovery tackle. Davis to Kinnaird. Paul Chalmers with the header, there's Mick Walter down to Davis. Oh, that's great play once again from St. Murren. Well won here by Chalmers. Look at that layoff in the chest by Mick Walter. Davis with a shot which he pulled off target. Martin's header. Wilkins will be content to accept the throw. Leaves it to Brown. Chalmers stepping in for St. Martin, losing it to Walters. A foul committed by Paul Chalmers. A free kick to Rangers, and the referee, I think, may have a word with Paul Chalmers. I think it's more for the speech play than it is for the original foul. He had a few words with Mark Walters after the free kick had been given.
Brown streaking. Drinkle helps it on. It's back to Ian Ferguson. A special from Ferguson and Rangers go in front. Well, take a look at the pod here. Played in by John Brown. Head flick on from Drinkle. Scrambled away by Cooper Rogers. Look at this stunning power and this right foot shot. Tearing the net out. Walker helps it on. Here's McWalter. Good turn by McWalter. Trying the first time effort. Well, he had Brian Hamilton a free on the right. But showing the typical striker's instinct. He wanted to have a go at goal. Turning away from Butcher. Turning inside Brown, then setting up the shot. You see Hamilton there in the clear. And Walter went down as he went for that ball with Goff. There was no infringement, and Walter's his own side. Martin trying to get close to him. That's a fine cross by Walters. Up goes McCoy. There's Ian Ferguson. And Trinkle trying to dive to head that on target. Great play by Walters, pulling that back from the corner flag. McCoy went up, came all the way through to Ian Ferguson with a shot. Trinkle couldn't reach it. So 45 minutes gone in the first half. As good a first half in the Premier League as I've seen for some time. The quality of the play and flashes has really been outstanding on both sides. And there goes the half-time whistle. Sides leaving the field to great applause, and it's thoroughly deserved. Ian Ferguson was the player who made all the difference. It was a goal of incredible quality coming from this free kick. John Brown playing it in, the head flick on. It was cleared by Neil Cooper. And this really is an incredible right foot shot from Ian Ferguson. That's the difference between the teams at half time. It's St. Mun nil, Rangers 1. <laughs> Them start the second half, and I've no doubt they would feel somewhat aggrieved about going in at half time a goal behind. Although the quality of the goal certainly could not be denied, but St. Mun contributed in style to that first half performance, and it really made for excellent entertainment. Butcher's header finding Walters on the left, getting space for himself, getting help from Derek Ferguson. There's Butcher. Drinkles dummy, here's Walters. Covering player with Tom Wilson, but fine play again from Rangers. Good understanding in that build-up. Corner kick. Taken by Walters. Short it goes to Ferguson. Derek Ferguson this is. And frigid full stretch. Finger tipping that ball away. Well, Derek Ferguson clearly looking for the far corner, bending that in, and there was Fritz doing well to touch that behind. Richard Goff looking for space in the box. Up goes Brown and Goff! The save by Fritz. A miraculous one at that. Take it ahead from Richard Goff, you'll see why now. Brown missed it, Goff didn't. And that's scrambled away by Fritz. Derek Ferguson and Brian Hamilton clash. Now, Brian Hamilton was in trouble earlier in the season. He was ordered off against Ranger at Ibrox. So, referee Bill Crombie having a word with him. It certainly was a hefty tackle. One, one only, I think. If you look, you know, maybe the message from referee Crombie. Well, Brian Hamilton was back. Derek Ferguson certainly reacted angrily to that. There's Wilkins with the free kick. Butcher's there. Neil Cooper appeared to handle the ball. And the referee has given a free kick to St. Mun inside the box. Well, that was for the initial challenge for the high ball, I think. Well, a little relief here, I think, for Neil Cooper. The two Rangers players, Drinkle and Butcher, challenging. That's why there was an infringement and the foot up there from McCoy. There was handball, though, by Neil Cooper, but the infringement had already been given in favour of St. Bernard. Goff's header. This is McCoy's. Inside is Ferguson. 
He sees a gap to go into, and the left foot shot this time. Well struck, but Fridge had his body behind it. Well, Ian Ferguson saw this gap open up in the inside left channel, made for it. Keeping that shot down, it's well taken by Fridge. Martin playing it to the near side. Here's Paul Kinnaird. Tom Wilson goes outside him. Kinnaird checks inside. There's Martin, now Davis. Oh, good play from Billy Davis. Well, he scored a spectacular goal against Ranger at Ibrox, trying to emulate that. Great jinking run this. Look at the control. Stepping inside Brown onto his good left foot. Ferguson to Wilkins, this is Stevens. Tom Wilson's Miller. Paul Kinnaird resisting a field for handball. It's Wilson who brings it away from Wilkins. Pass is over hit, allowing Walter to pick it up. Here's Derek Ferguson. Holding off Brian Hamilton, that's for Drinkle. Now Wilkins, Walters calling for the ball on the far side. First time header to Brown. Here's McCoist! And what a save by Fridge! McCoist can scarcely believe it. Great ball this from Ray Wilkins. But what about the first time header into the path of Brown, drilling that across the face of the goal. McCoist was sure he'd scored, but Fridge got there to turn it behind. Oh, great goalkeeping from Les Fridge, keeping St. Martin in the match. Walters drilling it across the far side, up goes Goff, directing that back to Ferguson. And another great save because that was deflected. Right across to the far side, and look at the quality of this header from Richard Goff, deliberately down into the path of Ian Ferguson. The shot deflected, but Fridge still got behind it. This is Walker. Now McWalter, Chalmers is through the middle, Kinnear on the left. Tom Wilson up in support. It's Kinnear. Inside is Keith Walker once again. Shot blocked by Goff, it breaks for Davis. Kinnaird. And the cross blocked by Stevens at the expense of a corner kick. Winnie makes his way into the six yard box, right to the near post. Played in by Kinnaird. Walter. Oh, and no take of a St. Martin right on that six yard line. Dangerous little ball played in there by McWalter. McCoy and Neil Cooper together, the clearance by Martin. It's Brown. Wilson lofting it forward. Paul Chalmers gives chase with Richard Goff. Back towards Kinnaird. Back now to Chalmers. Brown's headed away. Here's Billy Davis. Good effort by Davis. Trying the dipping volley. Well, that's a real pressure that time from St. Martin. That's Paul Chalmers. I think he was attempting a shot and goal, but Brown headed that out. Well played by Davis. The shot dipping just wide of goal. Paul Chalmers going off. And the replacement is the assistant manager Frank McGarvey. Well, McGarvey always well as his matches against Rangers. A long spell with Celtic. Coming here in 1985. Pass, a chance now for Rangers. Here's Drinkle. 
Well, under enough pressure from Tom Wilson to ensure that he couldn't get a clear head on target. Great pass that from Brown, releasing Walters on the left. Here's Kevin Drinkle, number seven, arriving, trying to head one beyond Lysbridge. That's one for McCoy's to chase. Looks now for support from the back. Walters impeded there by Cooper, but the referee waves play on. Drinkle battling hard for Rangers. There's Neil Cooper. Brought down by Walters. The referee allows play to continue with Rangers in possession. It's gone out for a throw. It's a non throw. Well, referee Bill Cromwell looks very calm indeed as he watched. Oh, two challenges there, which looked as though they might be judged free kicks. Side. Drinkle keeping the ball in play, but Fridge is on his own. Keith Walker's head on under pressure from Ferguson. This is Richard Goff striding forward. McCoy has gone down off the ball. A clash between two players. Accidental collision says referee Crumby, here's Walters and the obstruction by Brian Martin gives another set piece to Rangers still no sign of Richard Goff coming forward Butcher has gone up there's McCoy that should settle it and none resistance is broken it's played in by Derek Ferguson McCoy comes off his marker a delicate touch it's beyond Fridge into the corner and it's 2-0 to Rangers and it's goal number 17 of a depleted season for Ali McCoy and just the kind of tonic he would want with the World Cup match against Cyprus coming up in midweek Here's Mark McWalter breaking through the middle, the chance now for St. Mun. And the Rangers defence caught completely napping. The ball played into the space there by McGarvey, there was no cover as Mark McWalter went through. Good positioning there by Woods. And Teddy Butcher will award, I'm sure, with his defensive colleagues about that. A oh, good goalkeeping by Elias Fridge. He certainly has earned his corn this afternoon as a replacement for Campbell Money. Wilson to Winnie. That's good play from Superman out of defence. Walker's got a touch. This is Brian Martin. Martin playing it forward. Throw to Rangers, referee Bill Crombie checking with his linesman. And the Rangers march towards the league title, continues with another solid performance on a difficult away ground, Love Street. Never easy to come here and win both points, and Rangers have done that in the end in convincing fashion. And there goes the final whistle. Ali McCoy got the second. Warm exchange of words with Billy Davis, who was at Ibrox with him earlier in his career. The Rangers running out good winners in the end. West Bridge certainly did well in goal for St. in the second half. St. Nuno can be greatly encouraged by their first half performance. As a young fan who enjoyed what was a splendid match to the full, St. Nuno contributing massively in the first half. And then in the second half, they fought well until Ali McCoy's with that glancing header tied the points up for Rangers, kept them on target for the league title, 
the final score, St Mirren nil, Rangers 2. Richard, another good performance from Rangers, and with uh, Aberdeen slipping up, are there thoughts now that the title could be looming? Um, well, when we got back into the dressing room, uh, um, we heard that Aberdeen had been beaten 1-0. But we've still got a couple of games to win, I think. We haven't really worked it out. Like the manager says, we've taken um, a game at a time. Um, next week it's Hearts, and hopefully we'll get two points there. This is not an easy ground to come to, though, is it? You must have been happy with the general performance. Yes, um, we played quite well first half. Um, Ian Ferguson had a magnificent strike for the goal. Um, second half, we kept plugging away. And it was always a bit dodgy when it's 1-0. You think to yourself, they can maybe sneak a goal. But um, we got the goal. I don't think we were ever in danger of losing a goal. But we got a good goal with about five minutes to go the second goal. So uh, we're well pleased with two points, yeah. So you're looking at a very happy end of the season with the Scottish Cup final to come, the league race looking good. And of course, Wednesday night coming up against Cyprus. Have you had any time to think about that yet? Yeah, all my thoughts now uh, are attuned to Wednesday night and um, hopefully we can get the two points there. I spoke to a few people and they, they, um, in the media saying that we can improve our goal average and do this and uh, win 4-0 and 5-0. But um, I'd be very happy for a 1-0 result for, you... for us, obviously. You've been playing central defence very well, indeed well enough to win the man of the match uh, this afternoon. Um, any thoughts about position for playing on Wednesday night? No, not really. As long as uh, Mr 